What's up guys? How you guys doing? I hope you are well. Welcome to another video and today we've got a Q&A. A good old fashioned Q&A. Thank you so much for the lo loads of you guys who submitted questions for me uh, via my Instagram stories. Going to talk about that in just a second. I think this is going to be an awesome video. Let's get into it. So first and foremost, thank you very much to everybody who submitted questions. I had loads and loads of questions from you guys. They all came via my Instagram stories. I said in my last video that I was going to post uh, the thing about the Q&A over there, which I did. That's over on my Instagram page, at Rob Samble Sport. If you guys didn't see it and you don't want to miss out on the next one, go follow me on Instagram, at Rob Samble Sport, because that's going to be where I post things about these kind of videos and these kinds of Q&As. You can also find me on Instagram in two other places at Scorchers Photog and at Rob Samble's Photo. You can also use that at Rob Samble's Photo to find me on Twitter as well. So go check those out. That's where I post loads of my photos. I put things about my Q&As, stuff like that. So go check it out, guys. You do not want to miss those. Before we get into the video itself, please do take that two seconds. Just go hit the thumbs up button. Hit the like for me on the video. It helps me out loads on the channel. It works with all the YouTube and YouTube. What's YouTube? YouTube algorithms. Um, I'm not going to try and pretend. That's why we always ask for likes, right? That's why every YouTuber says, hey, go hit the like button. It's because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. It helps the video be more successful, get shared all over the place, and helps the channel loads and loads. So please do take two seconds. Just go hit that like button right now. You're not going to miss anything in the next two seconds. I'm probably going to be asking you guys to subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Don't forget to go and do that. Go hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Loads of other videos coming on my channel and loads of other videos already on my channel that you should go and check out. But today, we've got a Q&A. Now, I put a, um, a bit up on my Instagram saying, hey, guys ask a question to be in the next Q&A video, and I had loads. So my plan is to kind of quick fire these questions today. Going to still answer them properly, but try and answer them fairly quick, which might mean I can't go into a massive amount of detail per question, because you guys, as much as you love watching my channel, because of course you love watching my channel, right? That's why you just press the like button, but you love watching my channel, but you don't want to sit here for 45 minutes. No one wants to do that. So we're going to quick fire some of these questions as quickly as we can. A slightly different vibe in the office today. It's light outside, so it's not like the, the dark and the lighting doesn't have quite the same effect, but it's still cool. We're in here, we're relaxed. It's a Saturday morning right now. Uh, you guys are probably going to be watching this video on like Monday night, I would imagine. But it's Saturday morning right now. Let's get into some of these questions. So, right, what have we got first up? So here we go, guys. And look, I'll, um, everyone asked me a question. Thank you. I will share your Instagram um, handle on the screen as we go. Because um, look, got to share the love, right? Hopefully you guys will, will get a little support on your Instagram pages from this. N not like I'm a big YouTuber, right? You're not going to get 10,000 followers. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe I might give you two. We'll see how we go, right? So anyway, the first question came from uh, charlie.carter underscore 16 and asked, um, hi, I've got a Sony A seven and the 7200 f4 what do you recommend um to upgrade to um good question look i won't pretend i don't know much about the sony um i don't use sony myself i shoot canon um i, I don't I, I believe the a7 is a pretty good camera body though right so um pr probably if it was me like if i had the equivalent canon setup of that gear i suppose my next stage probably would be maybe to try and upgrade the f4 lens to an f2.8 um, if I was going to be shooting at night time or indoors, if you're shooting out time during the day, I would stick with the F4 for a while and maybe look at trying to get yourself a 300 mil or, or something a little bit longer. Again, if that is your circumstance and you're shooting outdoors in the daytime, you don't need to get a 2.8 300. You might be get it like a 300 F4, even a 400 F4, depending on your budget. Um, something that you can um, that you can stretch to a little bit. But I, I did a video just recently where I said, don't worry too much about the gear. Photo, you know, photos are, are, are the first thing. Get good at taking the photos before you worry too much about the gear. Um, but if you've done that already and the gear's your next step, then that probably would be my advice. Great, uh, great question, Charlie. Thank you very much. Right, what have we got next? Next question came from um, uh, focus.n.shoot and said, any thoughts about a 7200 2.8 on a crop sensor? I'm considering the new Sigma Sports. Okay, so um, what's my thoughts on it? Yeah, like it's it's fine. Um, I shot with a 7200 loads on a crop sensor. 
um, works really well. Uh, of course, you, you almost get like the equivalent extra reach. It's not real extra reach as we know. It's it's because the sensor is cropped, so it almost like it looks like it's zoomed in more. Um, but it works really well. Yeah, like you know the Sigma Sports. I used the Sigma Sports before. Loved it. Really great lens. I love Sigma lenses. My Sigma 18 to 35, uh, although I did just sell it just recently, um, it d did me for years, like probably four, five, I got it when it just came out. So how long ago was that? Probably five years I've used that lens. Loved it. Really, really great. So, so yeah, I hope that, I hope answers that question. Thank you very much. What do we have next? I told you I'd gone through these a little bit, right? What we got next? Okay, so the next question was J. Hal Newton, who asked, are there any photographers you find to be an inspiration for your work in photography uh, or in general? Good question. So, um, cool, hard question to answer. There's loads of different photographers who I find inspirational, I guess. Um, lots of whom I follow on Instagram. So if you guys go look at my Instagram pages, look at who I'm following, you, you'll see a lot of the people who I like because I follow them. But I suppose I've got photographers I like in sort of different different areas of photography, right? Um, you guys know I love the basketball photography. I follow lots of the NBA photographers. Um, God, just to name a few, I've got um, I follow Nate Butler, uh, Andrew Bernstein. He's obviously one of one of the best. Long time. Um, Stephen Gosling, I love his stuff. The Washington Wizards. Uh, Brian Babinow, Boston Celtics. I follow. Um, so lots of the NBA stuff. Um, I also find much closer to home. Um, some of the sort of BBL British photographers are awesome. I work with a guy called Ezra, um, Ezra Rollinson. Um, you know, you'd go check out his Instagram page. He does loads of non-basketball stuff, landscape stuff. His work's awesome. So go check out his because he does loads of cool stuff, which I like. I've also got photographers I like, um, you know, kind of in sort of other areas of photography, like um like weddings portraiture uh so david manning who, who i follow on instagram he does some cool stuff one of my biggest in inspirations especially when i started tony tony hart there's actually a question from him coming up shortly um go check out his instagram page amazing wedding photography uh, and, and other stuff as well like some landscape photographers a whole host of stuff um so i think i probably take inspiration from all over the place but i guess if we're looking specifically at my sports work the basketball stuff and of course loads of the premier league photographers as well i follow all like the Getty photographers, Getty Sports, um, some of the actual Premier League ones, Victoria Hayden at, at Man City, loads of cool football stuff as well. So um, loads of different people, I suppose, inspire me in photography. Go check out my Instagram page, look at my following list, because that's most of the people, right? I follow them for a reason, um, because they put out some, some awesome work. So, right, great question. Who have we got next? The next question is from, um, well, BK Lynn South. So, so Brooklyn South, um, 76, is the baby here? No, not yet. So I'm filming this on Saturday morning, uh, due the day after tomorrow. So literally any time now, if you guys see me put down the camera and dash out that door, that's why, right? But no, not just yet. Maybe by the time you watch this video, it might be, but it's not just yet. Thank you for asking, man. Appreciate that. What's the next question? The next one is from Adrian underscore Motra. Oh, man, your handle goes off the page, but I'll put it on the screen here anyway so you'll see it. Um, would you or have you ever considered going for a pro recognition, um, e.g. Um, LRPS or LISLP? No, so, so no, you mean like the kind of like um, sort of sports photography, like recognized bodies? Um, no, the honest answer is no. Um, not because I think it's not worth it or like I don't care about it. I just I just never have. Um, I suppose I've never really had a need to, um, so, so I just haven't. Um, if I'm honest, I don't know much about those organisations, so I'm, I certainly would never say anything bad about it or say it's not valuable because it could be, um, and maybe I just don't know. Perhaps I should have done it, but but I, I haven't is the honest answer. Good question. What we got next? The next one is... The next question is from RJ Steed. Uh, Stead, I'll put it on the screen. Um, so I'm lined up to get a 7D Mark II soon. Awesome, good camera. Uh, what tips have you got regarding using the dual card slots? Good question. Um, so for me, it's very simple. I just record the exact same stuff to both the two cards. I do that so I've got a backup of everything, especially when I'm doing any kind of paid work. Everything I take a photo of, I've got a backup of it because I record it onto both cards. Just means that if one of the cards goes wrong, 
touch wood, I've only ever once had a card that like went corrupt or did something funny. Um, and I had like nothing on it at the time. I only noticed it when I was like checking it for photos and it was actually a backup of another set of photos I already had. So I'm touching my wooden table here because no doubt it's going to happen at some point, but it hasn't yet. But still to be safe, I just record the same stuff to both cards. You can do other things. You can record like JPEG files to one and then raw files to another one, which could be good depending on the type of work you're doing. Um, but generally, I tend to do the same. If it's a job where I'm shooting in raw, I just record the raw files to both um, because I can always turn those to JPEGs later in Lightroom, right? Um, if it's a job where I only need JPEGs, um, I just record JPEGs to both. I'm shooting, um, you know, full res JPEGs, so so they're still pretty good quality photos. I can do stuff with them afterwards, like, you know, prints and all that sort of stuff. Good question, man. Enjoy the 72. Great camera. Used it for years. Still use it for all of my professional work right now, so good for you. Next question. In fact, we've got two questions coming up here from Isaac uh, Parkin Photo, I'm guessing that is, is best football stadium you've shot at good question um in different categories i guess right i suppose the first time i ever photographed at craven cottage um i'm a lifelong fulham fan right so i kind of felt that to be quite an honor so that was really cool to do that i shoot there all the time now though it doesn't feel any less special i still really enjoy it um the first time i shot at wembley stadium was probably cool um obviously awesome like ma massive stadium just very recently, um, I shot at the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which is incredible. The media facilities are crazy. It's like a restaurant in there. Um, the media, actually, the media room is a little smaller in the Tottenham Stadium, but um, you know, uh, otherwise, it's um, it's it's amazing. Lovely stadium. Facilities are crazy. It looks really good as well. Um, those are probably the best ones. You said football stadiums. So, I mean, I've done some cool indoor ones too. Like the O2 is good for the NBA for basketball. Um, but, but football stadiums, those would probably be the, um, the best ones. If I just had to pick one, I guess Wembley. Um, look, that's our national stadium, right? That's where the England team play and everything else. So if, I, if, if you just want me to pick one, which I guess is the essence of your question, Wembley football stadium um, right here in London. You had another question as well, man. You said, should you upgrade your body or lens first in sports photography? Good question. Um, as general advice, I would always say the lens is more valuable than the body, but I suppose it depends on your circumstance, right? Like if you've got a really old body um, and you want to be trying to shoot something at night time, you're going to need a body that can handle the higher ISO levels you know, better, which means probably the body would be your priority. Um, but if, if it was just generally in photography, I would always say there's more value in the lens than there is in the body if you had to pick one of the two what we got next next question is outside off dot something yours goes off the page as well man, but i'm going to put it on the page on the on the screen right here what differences should i be aware of when shooting premier league versus efl um efl's english football league for anyone who doesn't know um N not a huge amount of differences, I suppose, is the honest answer. The, the the differences, well, the main differences will be that there'll be more people there. There'll be more people at Premier League games than there will be at um, like Championship or League One. The lower down you go, the less photographers tend to be there. Um, although actually, no, not so. When you get into the lower leagues, you tend to get more again. I think because it's more more accessible. Um, but like, if you're looking at like you know Premier League versus Championship or League One, there'll always be more photographers at Premier League. So so it's busier. There's more people, which means more competition. You have less space. And there's normally more strict rules in terms of where you can go. So like Championship, they're not they'll normally you know or league one they normally tell you like yeah go wherever you like along the end over there um you know don't go on the side where the the dugouts are that they might say whereas some premier league grounds they'll literally tell you like there's some spots on the ground as in physically drawn spots you can sit on those spots don't go anywhere else um some even have like little dugouts and stuff you have to sit in so it, it depends uh, although actually one of the one of the strictest ones I've ever been to recently um, I'm not going to say the stadium because I don't want to annoy anyone um, but I found to be ridiculously strict it was actually a league one ground I photographed in just recently um, they made you stand behind a wall and like wouldn't let you sit like on the other side of the wall and uh, it seemed really petty to me um, like really bizarre rules but hey um, you know it is what it is so it's not always the Premier League that has the funny rules right something to something to remember so what's the next one and the next question oh from focus.n.shoot again um is hey all your shots from big events are under frozen in motion 
how important to be under an agency. Um, so it depends what you mean by important, man. But in, in simple terms, you, you won't get into the big events unless you're working for an agency, a, unless you are like working for a team that's in that event or working for the event itself or something like that. So if the idea is specifically to get into the bigger events, then the answer is you have to work for an agency because they're the people who get access to those kinds of events. Um, how important in general? Well, look, um, wh why do I do it? Because A, it makes the distribution of your images much easier. It gets you into the places where you can photograph the images that you can then sell to, to, to get the income from it. Um, and, and plus, it's just, you know, it's just easier to work for yourself. You have to get your own licenses. So like to photograph in this country, Premier League, for example, you have to get a data co license, which is, um, you know, very difficult. You have to have a proof of loads of certain amounts of paid publications and all sorts like that. So it was not difficult to do, but but it's hard to do, um, especially for somebody who is newer into the sports photography. So pretty important i guess is my is my honest question what's the next question is from lewis w hughes um how did you start in photography and what's your greatest photography achievement great question man um so how did i get started in photography well very originally um i used to play basketball back in the day and i used to mess around like taking photos of the basketball team i played for did that on and off um and then really just kind of left photography aside for years didn't really do anything um and then when when we got married myself and mrs sambles um we had a wedding photographer tony who's got a funny after next question is coming from tony um and and he, obviously he produced some amazing photos it just kind of got me thinking god i've you know i forgot about photography i'd you know i'd love to take some photos again got some advice from him about a couple of little bits um and then kind of went from there and got back into doing it and and, and pretty much went straight back into photographing some basketball teams um and kind of grew from there so that's how i started in it what's your greatest photography achievement um God, man, I, d I don't know. I felt like, um, I suppose it's little steps along the way, right? I always have little mini goals. Like the first time I ever took a photo that like other people around me, and I mean people whose opinions counted, like other photographers, said, God, that's a good photo. Like that felt like an achievement. The first time someone paid me to take photographs felt like a hell of an achievement. Um, when I first got into doing basketball, I remember joking with Mrs. Samble saying, God, if ever I photographed NBA like professionally, I, I could stop sports photography. That'd be awesome. I, I did that. That that was amazing. Then I was working for Fulham Academy and I forgot if I ever got to a level I could photograph Fulham first team, that'd be amazing. Um, and I did that and, and it was awesome. And and then I kind of thought, God, you know, if I could do like, you know, a Champions League game, that would be incredible. And, and, uh, and I achieved that or an FA Cup final and I achieved that. And um, now I, I'm hoping to photograph a, a major tournament as in a, a European Championships or a World Cup. Um, I might get an opportunity to do that next year, which would be which would be awesome. But lots of little steps, right? I, I don't necessarily have one. I suppose probably maybe the first time I got into the national press, which is this photo up here, um, you know, that, that was cool. That was, that was a, an awesome achievement. Uh, but lots of little achievements along the way, right? Great question. Great questions, man. Right, sorry guys, we had a slight interruption in filming there. I noticed like the screen looked cloudy. I thought, what the hell? Now, so I, I've been doing some stuff outside this morning and where I've come inside here, um, the lens has started <laughs> to fog a little bit, uh, which is a problem you can get if you change temperatures. That's a whole nother video. We're not gonna talk about that now. Um, but sorry about that. That's what happened. So the quality was rubbish for like the last couple of minutes. I'm sorry, guys. We should be back to normal now. I'm gonna keep an eye on it in case it happens again, but I think we should be all right now because I've, um, I've sorted it out in the little break there. So, um, we're going to jump back to um, the next question, which is from Tony. Um, got a good question from Tony, which I figured I would. What makes a really excellent sports photograph? So, um, great question, man. I think, so for me, like when people contact me and say, hey, like what's the tips for, for getting a good sports photo? There's like the basic level stuff, which is like, you know, um, get people's faces. Like people do sports photos where people are running away from you. And I don't like that. Um, you know, you need the ball in the photo. You need some space where that person's going to move to, I think is important. So there's the basic stuff, but what makes a really excellent sports photo for me is something that like 
captures the moment that describes the story of what's gone on so you know sometimes you can get some awesome action photos like people jumping or leaping or or nice action but something that tells tells the story of like you know perhaps the height of the emotion or or the low of the emotion Sometimes, especially when you're working for a team and you, you're almost trying to tell the story of what's happened. Sometimes the photo that tells the story of that game is someone looking devastated at the end of it because they lost in the last second. Or maybe it's the emotion. It's that moment where like the players are, you know, like running in the celebration and the euphoria that comes with it. But so it's really hard to capture that in in a photo and tell that story. But th those are the best ones. The, the for me, the ones that do the, the ones that when you look at that photo again, you know, people who knew what that event was like, God, I don't know, like, um, Usain Bolt crossing the line of the 100 meter final and the emotion in his face and people will look at that one photo that you know thousandth of a second frame and that will tell the story of that event because people will remember they'll look at that one photo and all the memories of of everyone who watched that event live or on tv or everything it comes flooding back from that one photo that for me is what makes an excellent sports photo the other end of it is like the people who turn sports photos almost into like art. If you go look up, um, if, if anyone goes in and Googles like, you know, best sports photos 2018 and you can look at like the, the, the stuff that won awards, um, you know, you know, worldwide or in the UK or wherever you are. And a lot of those will be photos that have almost kind of been turned into something artistic through a sports event. And those are really cool as well. To get an opportunity to photograph things like that don't come too often, but when they do, they, they really come off nice and it's really, really cool. So that for me is what makes an excellent sports photo. Okay, so next question is from Tuck. Thuck. 405 put it on the screen right here have you always been a canon shooter ever think of switching or going mirrorless uh yeah good question man yeah yeah always been a canon shooter ne never really shot with anything else um would I ever think about switching or going mirrorless i wouldn't switch to another dslr system like i've got no interest really in switching to, to nikon or anything like that would i ever consider going mirrorless 100 percent because the future of photography is mirrorless right it's going to be um professional sports photographers some have already people out there use in Sony um, the A9 I think is the camera they tend to use when they have so I definitely would right now though it's a hell of an investment it would really cost me a lot of money to switch to a full um, Sony mirrorless system for example so I will at some point um, but but not just just yet I don't think the um, you know it's the right time to switch at this stage um, you know the the mirrored DSLR bodies are still amazing do a great job Next question comes from Gaz. Um, best piece of advice you can give? God, oh, man, that's a tough question. That's a very general question. I think best piece of advice I could give would be practice, right? Practice, practice, practice. When I first started photographing basketball, I did everything. I did local teams, universities, um, you know, lower league stuff. Just keep photographing. Go for it as much as you possibly can. Because the more you photograph, the better you will get. Practicing, practice, practice, practice. Next question comes from It's uh, Jack's Photo. What's the first professional football match that you photographed? Great question, man. Um, depends what you count as professional. I mean, technically, my first professional game would have been a Fulham Academy, like under 23s game, because um, that's professional, as in they're all getting paid full time to play football. Um, in t if you mean professional as in like first team, like, you know, high level, um, then I believe my first one, no, in fact, I was going to say Fulham, I don't think my first one was, I think my first one was a Chelsea game, um, Chelsea, God, I can't remember what it was, maybe Chelsea v like Swansea or something like that, maybe I think it might have been. I can't remember exactly, but I think that's what it was. But my first one would have been a Fulham Academy under 23s game. Next question comes from Ari League Photos. I think it probably is. Goes off the screen again there. Says, is fast glass the only way to get good shots at night? Um, oh, I, I almost want to try and find a way to say no. Um, but but yeah, like it, it, it kind of is. Um, I mean, not necessarily, right? It depends where you're shooting at night. I mean, there are some places where you can shoot at night with amazing light and you don't need the fast glass. But generally speaking, it certainly it certainly makes the difference. 
even if you've got a camera body that's amazing at higher ISOs, like I use a 1DX, um, you know, and at night you can whack up to like 10,000 ISO and the image quality is still great. But even then, to get to that and to do that, I still need the F2.8. So, look, uh, yeah, unfortunately it is. But don't worry too much about that, right? I don't want people to go out there and worry and think, oh, I've got to get 2.8 glass. And, and, and unless you're shooting like at a high level, you're not going to be restricted to having to shoot at night. There's going to be plenty of stuff out there going on in the daytime that you can go and photograph graph so don't get too hung up on that um but i think honestly the answer pro probably is yes but remember fast glass doesn't have to be expensive right i i um shot a lot of indoor sports and basketball when i started off and i needed um you know a fast lens and for me at the time because of my budget that was the 50 mil f 1.8 canon which is less than 100 pounds so fast glass doesn't have to be expensive if you're talking long fast glass it's expensive, no getting around it, I'm afraid it's going to cost money. Um, unfortunately, photography costs us all a lot of money. Um, that kind of is what it is. <laughs> Right, guys, we are just about rounding off. First of all, I apologize for some of the image quality in this video. I've had some issues with the lens clouding. You guys have seen the, the video chopping here and there. I've been trying to fix it as we go, but it's causing me a bit of a nightmare. I think it's because I was outside with this, this camera lens body earlier, which is my mistake. I'm not going to do that again. Um, so I don't think it's going to happen again, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but look, thank you very much for everyone who submitted questions. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. Please do go take a second, hit that like button. It means loads to me. It helps out the channel loads. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new. Going to have a new video coming for you real soon. Um, hopefully going to get in a couple before Christmas. Like I said, we're going to have um, little samples probably going to be here anytime now. So it might be a bit quieter over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to do a real cool video sometime before Christmas, which is going to be, I was going to do like a review of my best photos of the year, but I haven't done that before. So rather than the year, I thought I would do a review of my best photos ever. Like I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite sports photos, tell you why they're my favorites and tell you where they came from. I think that would be a really cool video. That would be like a, like a Christmas special. Guys, in the meantime, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you real soon on the next video.